welcome back to episode 17 of the craft workshop podcast on the dawn stage channel um if you're new i'll give you a really quick intro uh, so as you've gathered yes my name is dawn and um yes i'm british um however um for the last 20 years i've been living in the netherlands just outside of amsterdam um and i am very fortunate in that i have my own workshop at my local art center which is where i film the podcast from uh the channel is a mixture of um vlogs so i talk about uh, daily life what it's like living in holland occasionally my family will appear on there uh, so my partner lawrence who's south african uh, our two boys josh and william although joshua i think he's appeared once <laughs> on the vlogs and uh, jack and daxter the fur babies and um once or twice in a month i'll come here and film the podcast i don't just come here to film a podcast i do come here to actually make things too um my as a crafter uh, i'm a bit of an all-rounder um, I tend to um, have some steady crafts that I've done pretty much since childhood and then I like to try new crafts as well so I'm very fortunate I've got this space. Um, I'll give you a little disclaimer, the workshop is, um, I share this space with um, 55 uh, units, um, some of which are occupied by artists uh, and artists can sometimes make noises such as um sculptures um you know they're, they're, they're chipping away at stone or they're drilling things or there's a lot of people coming and going so you might hear some um noise background noise and uh i actually live quite close to um schiphol airport which is the amsterdam airport so occasionally we might hear a plane going over because it's not very well insulated here so um i have a uh, a drink in my dawn's days mug it's just plain boring nescafe a lot of the podcasters will share about fancy fruity teas and that's just not me i like a good old instant nescafe <laughs> mm. and i need it because i'm feeling a bit froggy today um i just um well this the podcast will air before uh, next week's weekly vlog but i did mention on there that um i feel like um, i've got allergies you know i'm feeling a bit sort of um yeah i don't know what the word would be not congested I don't know just a bit wheezy definitely not got covid i actually did a test um last week which i talk about all in the vlog um so anyway i need this drink because i'm a li i might start getting a bit croaky so hopefully not because I like to waffle. Mm. I've made some notes. Um, if I forget to mention anything, um, I don't do like time stamps, um, but I do like in the show notes or the description box below, I'll put links or I'll the names of things or the people that I mention in the in the podcast. So if you miss um uh, if I miss something, you can find it there. Oh, and if you want to find me on other social media outlets, so you can find me on Instagram, which I'm very active on um, almost daily. I post something on my Instagram account, and that's at Dawn's Days. And I also host a nice um, Facebook group, Crafty World One, uh, which is just for anybody to share anything about general crafting. Uh, it's still, it's quite a small group. Um, I think people are a little bit intimidated to post things at the moment. So if you want to join and spam the feed with all your lovely crafty things feel free to do so um you can also email me if you've got any questions or comments or you know just want to say a more personal hello and you can find me at dawn at dawnsdays.com and um i don't respond to that daily but i check that inbox um a couple of times in a week um okay then we can get started um today so i've got a little bit of a little bit of crochet um some knitting and some sewing to show you and um i've got a little bit of income in and then um i'll just um have a little chat with you at the end about what i've been up to in yeah in just in my crafty life um if you do watch the vlogs and i think i might have mentioned this on one or two podcasts um i've been having quite intensive physio i've had um what's commonly known a frozen shoulder and so i've been having dry needling physio and manual therapy a lot of stretching uh, i've adjusted my workspace um, i'm currently working from home at the moment due to um covid restrictions and um it is getting better um i wasn't able to even craft a full stop a few months ago so 
you know things are starting to progress what i have discovered though is um small little small projects that you know can just sit in in my lap and you know that's more than enough for me so um sticking to that rule my self-imposed rule i've managed to do quite a few things so i figured well i'll come and um do a podcast and share that with you sorry i'm sat a funny angle here don't know why i sat like that um so crochet well talking of a bigger project um i'm not uh, i didn't bring it to the workshop um i have shared it a couple of times in the in the podcast um i've been working on a cal a crochet along uh which is run by eleanor from coastal crochet it's um picnic on the beach blanket there was two colorways you could choose from or indeed make your own colorway up it's fine uh i chose the one which was um the summer theme so it was like ging red and white gingham berries that kind of style um absolutely love making that however i didn't get past week two and i think it's actually come to a close it was an eight week crochet along um i've got all the wool it was all um style craft special dk so you know i've just sort of mentally accepted the fact that a, a project on that scale just isn't for me right now with my shoulder so um i'll only bring that again you know when i've made you know when I've, maybe when i've got to sort of week four so uh, i've not stopped with it i've just sort of put it on um pause for now um however i have got some things to show you and i realized um when i was unpacking all my stuff one of the things i completely um forgot to pick up i actually left it on the table uh I will insert a picture here um so i've been making um yeah crochet um hoop earrings for myself uh for summer and um they are so easy and so quick to make up the one that i would have put on the screen it's um like a jade green like a beats uh, blue color kind of thing not as turquoise as the cupboard behind me and if you're interested in making them it's super super easy um it's just a hoop earring however big you like to wear them and i made mine in katona scapius katona and um all i did was uh, a single crochet around the entire hoop till it's covered and then so as you crochet imagine um you crochet and you're crocheting around the outside and then when it gets to the end i push all the stitches inwards and then you start crocheting in so you're shrinking in so i did single crochet around the hoop push the stitches inwards and then i did um in us terms um triple crochet miss a stitch triple crochet crochet miss a stitch so triple miss triple miss all the way around and then um again us term i did um double crochet miss a stitch double crochet miss a stitch and then that pretty much closes um the entire earring again i mean how easy is that so uh, i'm definitely going to make more of them and i'm going to play around with adding beads to them so um yeah when i've made a stack of them i'll show you on the podcast but um i think if you look on youtube there's loads and loads of, of tutorials so if you're handy with a crochet hook you can easily manage them they might even be a nice um thing to sell in your uh, etsy shop or I don't know for a school fair or give us gifts you know they're such a quick easy make um and my earrings um i actually ordered them from my beading supply because i do make jewelry and so they're stainless steel because i have a metal allergy um and stainless steel i'm okay with i couldn't wear it like every day day in day out but I could comfortably wear a stainless steel earring for an evening say or a day uh, like a nice lunch so anyway it's not to waffle now <laughs> um so one more thing with the crochet because i'm desperately trying to get my crojo back and as you can see um i like to make the occasional amigurumi these are all um, animal friends of pika pal however i've had my eye on this pattern uh for a while now um last year and i kept thinking i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it but um there was quite a few of the pika pal animals that i wanted to make but i'm not gonna lie i've gone off the pika pal full stop i've mentioned this before and so i'm not going to go on about it too much but that the books are they're, they're shocking there's mistakes in, in through throughout the entire both books so um an experienced crochet crochet could fudge it or get around it but you know I'm, they're expensive books so i've just 
put them to one side for now I might pick them up again later uh, but anyway because um, uh, a couple of weeks ago we sadly lost uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip uh, passed away and um, I watched the funeral and I cried all the way through it as did most of my friends and then it was the Queen um, of England, Queen Elizabeth II's birthday so I thought well oh, fancy making something British so I'll show you um, the front cover of the pattern which I printed off so how cute is that so that's uh it's actually the queen's um royal guard queen's guard so she's written royal guard and Ro i think it's rokinki is the pattern designer uh i bought this via her etsy shop oh the camera's jumping it doesn't seem to like um a lot of white background um sorry about that um so i cast that on and again because of the shoulder i'm having to sort of do it you know slowly slowly um but i'll finish it by the next podcast so i've done his little head although it's not so little um the pattern called for uh let me see i think it was a 2.5 or 2.25 millimeter hook uh this is a knit pro um i'm sorry it seems to be jerking around a bit so um and if you use safety eyes Everything I've um, crocheted with is um, Scapia's Katona. Uh, however, uh, they're all from my stash, so I don't have the ball bands anymore. I'm really sorry. Um, it, this is cream. Uh, and then I've done his little arms. How cute are they? So you can see um, you don't stuff the arms. You crochet them flat. The pattern called for like a burgundy, but I really wanted... This is like this, uh, like a British um post box red you know it's really really like um a nice rich bright red uh and then I've, um doing his body i changed the colors up a little bit i've gone for um i don't know if you can see that it's got a black base i've gone for um uh like this goldy mustard color up for it around his waist and then i've got some gold rikarumi so i'm gonna do his little i don't know what you call them his little buttons swags whatever you call them in gold i think but um yeah really it's um definitely it's definitely got my crojo crojo going again so i'm gonna um look out for more patterns from um this designer rokiki um she does us quite a few out and they're all in this cute little you know like a bobble head style very sweet so um when i finish that i'll share that with you so that was nice to get me going again and and also a small project, as I said, you know, I've been trying to do like really, really small, light things, you know, that I can just pick up, do a few rounds on and then put them to one side. So uh, moving on to knitting. So finally managed to get a pair of socks finished. Finally, um, I've had one of these socks knitted for ages. So now I've got a pair. No, they don't match. And if you're OCD, I'm really, really sorry about that. <laughs> This is the um, Regia um, Arnie and Carlos um, special design, I think it was. And I can't remember the name of it. I'll put the name in the description below. Sorry, every time I hold something up, it seems to flicker the screen. Let's move you a bit, see if that helps. Let's give that a go. I wonder if it's the reflection in that cabinet. Oh, we'll try. Let's try this. Um, yeah, so this is just... Um, a sort of made up pattern that I've cobbled together following different um, YouTube tutorials. Um, so it's a two by two um, rib. Um, my recipe is I do 20 for the cuff. I don't like shorties. I'm not a really big fan of them. I do um, around um, 40 to 50 rows for the ankle. And then I do um, this is um, a heel flap and gusset. And then again, I'm at British size five or five to six, depending on where I buy my shoes from. And that's in a European 38, 39. So from the heel uh, to the toe decrease, this is roughly around 50 stitches. And then it's just, I don't even know what this, um, I don't know what that toe decrease is called. It's just a standard uh, SSK knit two together at the end and then a Kitchener for the toe. See, when you get to eight or nine stitches, on the toey kitchener that so uh, i've not i've not been knitting socks for a long time uh, i'm still quite new um but this 
recipe I've got it down pat now so um, I'm definitely going to cast another one on because I've got another um, colorway in this um, design line uh, it's more like reds and pinkish and um, oh, I wish I could remember the name of it now anyway I'm going to cast that on because I like that's like um you know this once you get past the rib <laughs> sometimes I lose my ability to count two by two uh, once you get past the rib this is just mindless knitting and then a little bit of concentration for the heel flap and that's it you know so um really happy to get them fi finished not fixed although maybe some stitches need fixing um then the other thing i've only got one of these but i, I did finish my uh flight of the bumblebee uh socks this is by lindsay Twanter from stitch crate love um i didn't want to carry the pattern down the um the foot the top of the foot because i don't i don't like to have um like patterns or bulk you know in my um when my foot's in my shoe um that's just a comfort preference on my part so i purposely only chose to do um the pattern and if you can see there's little excuse my fingers i've been working in the garden this they're like little bumblebees so um this is uh lammy's um the cuff uh the heel and the toe and i've mentioned this before this the wool is my own uh hand dyed it's um 75 percent merino 25 percent um polymer um just lots of speckling and a little bit of light color pooling um, it's all, I don't know if you're picking that up, it's all like shades of um, pinks, blues, greens, lilacs and yellows. So, um, really like that, um, doing a pattern sock. And then the other thing which was new for me, um, I did this um, Lindsay's pattern call for the German short row heel. Uh, I think I shared this before but I'll share it again. And... Um, I didn't know this existed um, when I was learning to knit socks. If I had done, I probably would have started with this because you don't have to pick up stitches with this. Um, so I think if, if you're a beginner or you fancy having a go at making shop, um, socks, go for the German short row heel first because um, I do recall when I first started to learn, picking up the stitches for a heel flap really confused me. So yeah um i will get around to knitting the second one uh but not now because it's not really sock weather although saying that i have cast on um something that is a bit sort of autumn wintry but anyway i'll share that in a minute uh the other thing i finished was um the feb no the march uh year of dishcloth um i forget the designer's name her first name's galane or galene uh but i can't remember what her um account is or a company name is uh again this is in scapia's katona um so this was a nice easy knit quick knit small um however april is um oh this was double dutch march april is something like round the twist i think i haven't brought it with me uh the pattern um or a picture because um I've cast it on I don't know how many times I do not like that pattern I've asked some of my nitty friends and all of them have um said that you know it trying to get their head around it it was you know like a never mind you know a, a twist it was like a brain twist and I thought why am I doing this it's not giving me any joy or pleasure just don't do it I was in this sort of like I have to do it every month and it's like well no you don't actually have to do it every month don't so I'm not doing it um when I get to the end of the year, if there's any that I've decided not to do, uh, I might review and see if I fancy doing them. But I've not got a set colourway or, you know, one. I've used Katona, I've used another brand. So it's not as if any of them are actually matching. So I'm not getting hung up on that. I enjoyed doing that. Probably would make that again. Um, then the other thing, well, I've not brought it to show you, but... Um, Sorry, I'm just looking at the time. Uh, I did attempt to do a couple of rounds on my J sweater, uh, but that's with um, like a, a double knit and um, it's quite, It's it, I've not split for the sleeves yet, but it, it's quite, because it's a colour work sweater. It, it's, um, it's getting too bulky for me and I, I did two rounds and I was like, no, 
stop my shoulder was burning but what I did see which was really nice is um Anita from Gargoyle Knits she's cast it on so it looks gorgeous I've done mine in uh, a grey and cream colourway and then I thought Anita's was um blue I thought but um anyway go and have a look at Anita's podcast if you want to have a look really nice pattern very well written and quite simple to follow if you fancy uh, having a go at colour work although with it being a sweater you know it's not um a quick job but anyway when my, when my shoulder is feeling better i'll pick that up again because yeah i want to get it finished i've decided i think i'll do three quarter length um sleeves because yeah most of my sweaters are that length and uh or if i've got long sleeve i always end up rolling them up or pushing them up and the coffee's still warm the other thing knitting is i feel like i'm zooming through this i'm sorry if i'm speaking really fast um so uh actually this was karen from uh stitches and jacks um recommended this to me and i can't remember if karen recommended the sock or the mittens but anyway I've, i'm doing the mittens and i'm going to do the socks this is uh by a designer called, called uh, ducathy uh you can see they're like these fingerless mittens and they're uh, bee creative mittens it says let the bees fly on fingerless mittens and you can see with the pattern it calls for three colors and um i've had this um yarn in my stash for a while now that i, I dyed myself so and i've been looking for a nice project and even though two skeins for a pair of fingerless mittens is way too much yarn that's fine because i'll probably gift knit some as well but um yeah cast them on so you can see uh i'm already i've done the cuff and you can see oops i'll try and show you you can see here that's where the color change is but i'm sticking with this uh yellow and blue and i'm not sure if you're going to pick this up on camera but you can see with the blue there's a little bit of variegation in it and i'm not sure on the yellow well here are the two i've pulled them up so i'm not sure yeah here there's like quite light sort of i'm saying like a blush color running through them um yeah really enjoying them uh, anyway i couldn't put it down I did this is the second cast drop because i was really enjoying the the cuff which not it's not like me i don't like ribbon but i was really enjoying it and i forgot to go up a size with my needle so the the size that i'm following is i'm doing um circular needles so i did the cuff on 2.25 and then the um the color work on uh, three millimeter and it called for a hundred centimeter cable and i didn't um i didn't have um a 2.25 needle for my um knit pro interchangeables i don't even know if they do the interchangeables that small anyway so i ordered um the knit pro zings these are the the fixed ones works like a dream so as i said i was enjoying them so much i completely forgot to go up a size so these were lovely really really nice the only thing is because I, I am a sock knitter now um i wouldn't necessarily have, have um used a hundred centimeter cable it's a bit on the long side for me i think 80 is perfectly fine so if you are if you fancy having a go and you're a sock knitter maybe if you've already got a set with a, a shorter um cable if you're going to do it with the um magic loop i would do that so um and then i bought uh so these are the three millimeter um things exactly the same these are absolutely dreadful they i've tried even with pliers to squish them down they catch every single time and I, I, lo I love the pattern so much that i was even trying to persevere and oh it was just it took every shred of enjoyment out of it and then i mentioned it on my instagram and a few other people had said yeah they'd had the same problem with the three millimeter fixed really strange so uh, i put that on hold it's in a project bag <clears throat> it's in a gifted bag by my lovely friend jeanette 
these crappy clegs and um i ordered um the interchangeable ones so super super happy with that so that's what i'll be doing uh this week i'll get back onto that um and i think that's all the knitting things i've got to mention yeah that's it okay well got some sewing things i'm just going to pause the video because sometimes when i'm i want it for too long um the um lip sync goes out on the editing so bear with me okay so sewing um again everything i'm talking about is like tiny small projects although not necessarily tiny as in the length <laughs> some of them like the mittens are going to take me a bit longer but i'm enjoying them um uh, a while ago um Jeanette and I did um a gift swap which we do from time to time and Jeanette said oh I've not done it for ages do you fancy having a um, swap with me so I said yes so I was really late I only posted mine at the weekend so if you're watching Jeanette watch out for the postie um so Jeanette um knows that um I really really fancied um trying um English paper piecing so she sent me loads of um scrap bags of like her off cuts and oh my gosh i was just in my element i mean amongst other things i mean she sent me this stunning bag and loads of other goodies um so i got really really into the epp um i've started making um um ooh, i don't know what the size is is it a quarter inch hexy um patchwork quilt for my doll's house um that's slow going but um as with all crafters, I got distracted because um, I've been, um, I follow um, Emma from um, Vintage um, Sewing Box, Emma Jones, and um, she, um, she posted something recently, I think it was a new box design, and I've already made her needle case, which is absolutely beautiful, and then um, I was like well I don't know if the box is a bit too sort of advanced for my hand stitching skills yet and then I saw she's got this free pattern for this adorable pin cushion so it's all hand stitched so isn't that the cutest thing ever I mean it's tiny I haven't got any pins to hand so you can see how small it is well hopefully you see and it's got like this little flower hexy and then the little mitered corners. This is a free pattern. So I think you could scale it up if you wanted to. But I just wanted to stick to the pattern because I'm quite new to English paper piecing. Um, what happened was I wasn't paying attention to the pattern. And I actually started making um, hexes in one size up. And it was only when I laid them in the flower and I was like, oh no, that doesn't work. What have I done? so i realized so i thought well i'm really having a fine old time here making these head skins so i carried on and carried on and carried on and then um i got to the point where it was like okay what do i do with them because they're too big for the dollhouse and i'd actually been making a few stitching them together making a few stitching them together and um i thought you know what um i'm gonna I fancy making um something like a little notions um something for you know either just general crafting or knitting what could i make so what popped into my mind a little sewing case so you can see these are all the little hexes don't look too close at the stitching <laughs> that um i made and then these are some of my these are my workshop scissors uh i've not put um i've not got i was gonna i've got little plastic yeah, okay i've got one here i've got like these little plastic like press struts i think but um i think i might order some plastic snaps and i'll tell you why in a minute um if you want to have a go these uh these are the fabric um hexes uh the inners uh, from ashmi designs um jeanette sent me a couple of sizes in them uh game changer and um i don't um base them uh with um hand stitching um she sent me a sew line glue pen also game changer um but because i was um playing around um the 
fabric hexes from Ashmi Designs are um, slightly padded. So uh, I've um, padded this with felt and it's way too thick. So I've actually got some uh, Visilign here in the workshop. So I'm going to, um, I'm actually, after I finish the podcast, I'm going to spend the morning here and play. Uh, I'll explain why in a second. But um, yeah, this is actually way too thick and, and my sewing machine struggled to get through that sandwich. But it's fine. It's only for myself. So really, really loved making that. Uh, but then that got me thinking so in the art centre normally a few times in the year we have like open days or like um, markets out on the um, car park at the moment we're in restrictions so that's it's not on the cards right now we were planning to do something in May but that's not to say uh, that you know in the autumn or summertime we might be able to do something so because I'm not necessarily an artist that's selling, you know, I haven't got a gallery here, I'm not selling like pottery or whatever. Um, I was thinking aside, I, I do have jewellery here, which um, people are welcome to buy. If I'm here, I put them out in a display at the front. But I thought, well, what could be like really nice little things that I could whip up and then just keep them here as stock. And then if, if we do have an open day, uh, as well as my jewellery, I've got things to sell. So I thought, well, actually, um these scissor cases are ideal so i've been these are experiments but i'll share them with you so that's the outer is um like a linen a cotton linen and then it's got this um really fine cotton in the inside and then you can see i've stitched uh over stitched them with um like a very pale pink uh this isn't lined so you know it's just an experiment um i was even toying with the idea i'll just put oops i'll just pop the scissors in so you can see it works perfectly fine uh oops um you know i mean you could happily put that in your um project bag and it's it's fine you know i mean it's two layers of fabric and it's been um like quilted over the top so it's quite it feels a bit floppy but it's quite sturdy so i was thinking that would be nice um you know with a bit of embroidery on it or beadwork so that was another experiment and then again sticking with the experiment um i tried the felt lining again but obviously not with hexes so i mean i've still got cotton strands uh this is like an old-fashioned um ticking and a bit of scrap lining i had lying around i haven't used like treasured fabric um so I think this has just got the felt inside, but I'm going to try with the Visiline and make a comparison. And then, yeah, depending on what I like, I'll batch make them. And I don't know, they're also nice, like little gifts to make. If you're interested in making them yourself, if you're a sewer, if you want to do like EPP, I don't even know how many hexes are in this. I should have counted it really. Um, there's absolutely loads of YouTube tutorials on the internet. I mean, these sewing cases are as old as time. But I have found one for you, if you fancy having a go. Uh, and that's from... Uh, if you look at YouTube, I'll put the link in, but if you want to look at it yourself. Uh, Padded Scissor Keeper. And uh, Beautiful Things. Uh, she's got a PDF, um, just a hand-drawn template for you, if you want to have a go. So... But as I said, you know, there's, there's loads of stuff out there. So, you know, you can Google it for yourself. But I think these are going to be a um, nice little nice little stash for my stock. Uh, I think that was all the sewing-y kind of things. Yeah, I wanted to talk about. It's so cute. Um, well, yeah, that's pretty much everything I've been working on. Um i've had i've placed an order for a couple of dollhouse things and i did receive some dollhouse things in the post which i'll talk about in a minute um the um i might be able to go to the dollhouse shop in a few weeks so if i do that usually spurs me on to do um some crafting in the dollhouse so um hopefully i can update you on that um but i think yeah, and I was hoping to make candles, but I didn't get around to doing that. That's the other thing I forgot. Uh, so, what um, I can talk about incoming, because um, 
Well, I already bought some new needles, which I needed for my mittens. But while I was there, this is the shop uh, in Holland. It's uh, one ply, uh, but it's uh, yarnplaza.com or the, the, this is the German site if you want to order from them. Uh, I don't see a reason why you shouldn't have a look because I order from, is it Happy Crafts? um and they don't take too long to come and you know if they've got offers on discounts or maybe they've got brands that you don't you can't find from other stores so i would have a look at that anyway while i was there some things accidentally fell in my shopping cart as they do and um i um i i've got um some skeins of um yarn that i joined i think i spoke about it in the last podcast i'm pretty sure i did it, um i joined up for a six month um like a skein club six month skein club from telling yarns beth at telling yarns and um the first three i received um were single ply and then i changed it to um sock base um the uh, merino um polyamide um um four ply sorry uh but then these single um ply skeins are beautiful i have shared them uh so you will have seen if you did if you missed it you can go have a look at um the last podcast and um I'm like what to do what to do um i've got three skeins two of them would look gorgeous together and the third one it's like mm, i fancy i'm going to keep that as a separate project but um i thought this these were new <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's new by Lana Grosser, but they were new in stock at Warm Plain. Um, this um, cool wool lace. So I, I thought it's like it's nice, like a like a foresty green and a burgundy. Uh, I thought these would be a nice um, solid block colour to go with the uh, two of the skeins. I thought one of the colourways was. I know what they were dark mark and uh all aboard the hogwarts express so these will go nice with that so um i'm looking at what i fancy making with those um at the moment i've had a few people suggest um shawls with and i fancy a la lacy shawl but then it's like i think i would like to work on it but i want the pleasure of wearing the yarn because they're beautiful they're so soft and buttery but uh, i'm not a big shawl wearer to be honest with you so i'm still i'm toying over that but anyway these were new in stock so i thought i'll grab them um if you're interested uh sorry they're full of fibers off something that was in uh i can tell you so it's pure extra fine merino wool and if you like the colors this is uh number 20 cool lace and this green is number six if you like those colors and then the other thing which um i thought oh, i fancy this because i fancy doing something with mohair you know two held together and um this they had these um i don't think they had some kind of promo they weren't expensive i, I forgot to bring the um the invoice to tell you how much they were exactly but anyway you can look for yourself uh that this drops um kid silk so this is like off white uh can tell you the color is actually number one and this is um i'll tell you it's so it's class it's a yarn group a and it's uh 75% mohair and 25% silk and you get um hold on uh in a 25 gram ball you get uh 210 meters so um I thought that's not bad so I ordered two of them to try so I was thinking I might do a cowl with the other um the other single ply skein from telling yarns and then um hold it together with this so we'll see 
but anyway oh it's so soft and i tried it on my neck and it doesn't i know some people have issues with mohair and i'm also a little bit funny with fibers but i'm not getting any prickles or anything off it so anyway we'll give it a go um so that's one of the things that sort of fell in my shopping cart um which ironically i didn't need any more new wool so um i'll talk about the dollhouse so uh one of our lovely viewers um shether um she mentioned a while ago that she had some little uh little wooden miniatures and she didn't need them would i like them for the dollhouse so i said absolutely i would love them so um anyway you know we got busy and with covid and everything and i'd actually forgotten about them and then um all of a sudden i got this package in the post um in the week and i was like what's this and then i saw who it was from i was like okay this is a little bit bigger than uh dollhouse wooden things so shadow had sent me a beautiful uh goodie box of really nice stuff i didn't bring everything um i just bought more like the crafty stuff but um she gave me a bag like this full of all little wooden pots and pans and candle holders and cups and goblets uh gorgeous i think i'm going to paint some of them and then my friend um antoinette her twin girls are making uh, a mouse house with um with their mom at the moment so i asked her that is it okay if i get i give some of them to my friend for her daughters because they will love them so she said it was fine uh and she also gifted me um beautiful little miniature porcelain um uh, set you know like with um serving plates and stuff so when that's all in situ in the doll's house i'll um put i'll film that but that will be in a while and then the other thing she sent um which was i've never heard of this brand before uh because we don't we haven't got it in holland that's for sure it's this um superwash sock yarn uh by Woolcraft, and there was these cute little stitch markers on them how cute look at that little ducky and these are all like nice plums and lilacs and lavenders purples beautiful beautiful it's really really soft um i think she put some lavender in the package as well because it smells so good um i've actually one of the first pair of socks that i knitted for myself are these kind of tones i think they were in uh drops fable i thought um so i'm thinking i would like to start making a few socks for gifting and um but i always i, I buy sock yarn and then i can't part with it and then it's like do you know what this would be a really nice thing to knit a pair of beautiful socks and maybe gift them at christmas to somebody i know what i'm like i'll probably keep them they'll probably sit in my stash for ages and i'll just look and admire it admire it but anyway i was thrilled how nice is that so thoughtful but no that's not all she also sent me some fabric uh, i did share this on the vlog when i, I did the, i opened them that's the right way up it's beautiful you can see my colors uh really really nice cotton this is i can tell you um it's uh the design is lily pad and it's a debbie shawl so if you if you're interested in that gorgeous beautiful i like debbie shawl pattern uh, fabrics they're really hard to get hold of in holland so or, or you can get them online but I, i'm i like to feel things to be honest with you i don't do a lot of online fabric um shopping and then the other thing she sent me this stunning bee fabric and their panels um i'll show you and i forgot when i did the when i when i did the unboxing i forgot to mention where the brand so i'll share that with you look at all these bees as you can see i like a bee i like a bee <laughs> uh i'll show this little panel you can see them be joyful these will make gorgeous project bags aren't they beautiful and another bee and then they've got top and bottom they've got these um little hexes shether said um might like them for um patchwork gorgeous so if you're interested um this so i'll tell you if you can't read it on the screen it's um 
Be Joyful by Deb Strain for Moda Fabrics. If you're interested, I'll show you. Gorgeous, absolutely beautiful, so thoughtful. Gosh, I was over the moon when I opened that package and, you know, just so kind. So if you're watching, Shedda, I know I've already thanked you, but I'm going to have to keep thanking you, so <laughs> thank you. Beautiful. It's all crumpled because I keep getting it out of the box and showing people. <laughs> and then I fold it in a different way every time. Um, and then, so... Oh, one of the other things, um, I haven't got it to show you, but um, some shopping. Um, I've been looking around at Advents. I did even toy with the idea of doing my own advent this year because, you know, I was trying to get my um, hand-dyed little sort of sideline going. But, you know, with the postage at the moment, I've just, forget it, I'm not going to do it at the moment. Um, so I was, um, last year and the year before I did Vlogmas, last year I ordered a couple of advents. I did a swap with Jeanette and then I bought Jeanette's advent. And I think I had um, Ellie's from Craft House Magic and um, thrilled with them. So I've been looking around again and I, 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 don't, I don't know if Jeanette's doing one. I said if she does, I'm definitely want one. But regardless, Jeanette and I will do a, a swap anyway. That's really good fun. But um, I've been looking around, you know, for others. And um, it, I don't know what's happened, but the advents this year seem to have just doubled in price. I mean, it's like, wow, gosh, you know. And, you know, I, I know that there's a lot of work goes into them and a lot of thought and effort and you know i just be you know being an adequate hand dyer myself um i just yeah i can't justify spending you know 140 150 pounds on an advent calendar which is probably going to be full of yarn that it's very nice but i could probably dye myself so you know and i'll probably get chocolates in it that you know nice box of celebrations kind of thing so and, and that might sound awful and i'm not knocking anyone who's bought them because it's also the pleasure of opening them but i just i can't just i can't justify it i really really can't uh however so i was talking to jeanette about this and she's of the same mind as well it's like we just can't understand how the advents have just rocketed in, in price i can understand if they go up but i mean they've up, almost doubled in price and some of the ones that I've been keeping an eye out for um, haven't put Advents up at the moment. So I'm curious if they will, you know, and if they do, what kind of prices they put up. Like Ellie's not put an Advent up. Yeah, I don't know if she will or not. Um, anyway, so I was talking to Jeanette about this and she actually, she said, oh, I've ordered one uh, from um, Suzanne at Green Lampkin Yarns. And um, I've stopped ordering um, hand-dyed yarn from the UK because of the, the postage a cost of a skein is the pot the postage is the same price almost so i've just stopped for now um and for the same reason that i'm not doing it from here uh but suzanne had a really really good arrangement that uh you buy um you can buy um the um three days monthly so um i've bought um i've bought pack day package offer bundle one and two or month one or month january february i can't remember which way around um anyway so um i'm gonna order monthly from suzanne and i think it's it's something like 10 pound or something a month and i think if i remember rightly the colorway is i thought it was dickens christmas dickens i thought but um anyway i've been messaging with suzanne because i missed the first month you know i'm a bit late to the party kind of thing and when i saw it and you know and i know jeanette is really really fond of green lampkin yarns and um i i didn't know suzanne so i was uh I, you know i said oh you know i'm a bit late and she said no problem so she's managed to give I've, i'm gonna catch up you know so i won't miss a month and i just found she was so helpful so friendly and um anyway susan if you're not familiar susan also has a channel uh, amongst other things but if you're really in the market for an advent and you know you either can't afford that kind of money for an advent i mean let's face it that's a lot of money 
even some of the instalment plans that people are offering are like 40 something your pound you know and i still think that's a lot of money um so if yeah that might be a good option for you so go and check out um suzanne at green lampkin i'm thrilled so um i don't know if i'll be doing vlogmas this year i might do sort of like um a mini vlogmas you know every couple of days anyway it's too far ahead for that we don't know what the world would look like then but um yeah that was um an acquisition i've signed up for an advent so for sure we'll have a couple to open uh between us um okay i think that was everything i've been shopping uh yeah so this so this isn't necessarily like sharing the love although it is a little bit but i'm just i'm just gonna talk to you about some um channels that i've been watching um and some of them are new and um or some of them are new to me so the first one so i can't remember but a few people have mentioned this account to me um and then for, i don't know for some reason it popped up on my recommendation on youtube recently and um i thought you know i'm gonna watch this lady i can't remember her name is she called karen anyway her channel is nitty natty new and i'm glad i watched it because uh she, I mean, my gosh, that woman is an amazing knitter. But she's also um, going to be releasing a sock pattern, I thought, by the end of this month. And it's something like um, playground or school socks or something. And do you remember, um, you know, your school socks used to have like those like, white cotton ones with the little holes in them. It looks a little bit like broad Anglais style. They're in that theme. They look amazing. And I, I was like, I want to make those socks. So I was really glad that I subscribed to her and I started following her on Instagram. Um, I put a link below. And then um, also, so Angela, who's knitting on the farm, Angela's a friend of mine. Um, she um, organised um, a knitty Zoom group uh, once a month uh, for anybody who wanted to join. So if you want the details for that, you know, go to Angela's channel and then find out if, if you want to sign up because um, she's the host of it and uh, it was the first one a few weeks and there was um, a couple of people on there um, who I already know and um, I think they watch now and again so Helen, Helen Reed, who's Helga's at home uh, Helen, lovely Helen was there, she joined in it was really, I talk, I chat to Helen a lot you know, with uh, we, we DM each other it was really nice to talk to in real life and then the other lady is um, Jackie um, I think Jackie watches now and again she's also one of my Instagram friends so Jackie dialed in but anyway I made new friends which was really nice and one of the ladies uh, after the Zoom um, meeting she launched her first uh, podcast to her channel so that was really nice so if you're interested that's Amanda who's little Lycac um, I was going to say lilac, but that's my handwriting. I haven't got my reading glasses on. Little lycac. And um, again, Amanda is a great, you know, uh, knitter and crocheter. So check if you're really, you know, if you're into your knits, check her out. Um, uh, she, I, th I think she's got a massive stash of yarn too. I did actually ask her, you know, can we see your stash? Flash your stash. You know, we like to look at that, don't we, girls and gals? Um, guys and gals even. Um then the other thing is oh yeah um i think i think it might have been ruth who mentioned this uh who, ruth likes to knit ruth loves to knit sorry ruth if you're watching ruth loves to knit we know love, ruth loves to knit because she's dead good at it no no i think she mentioned this uh channel it's um Al lovely alex who's my yarny corner uh, Alex also crochets and knits, so um, I, I subscribe to her. Really, really friendly, really nice, very um, laid back kind of podcast. And um, and then the other thing is, so I do, I am an average YouTube watcher. I've had I've had a YouTube account since two thousand and twelve, and sometimes I kick myself that I should have just started filming then because I'd probably be loaded by now. But anyway, <laughs> as it happens, I just have a nine to five office job. <laughs> and i waffle in my workshop to you guys but um i do watch some really big channels but this one um it just popped up on my feed on my recommendations and i am obsessed with her um it's a, a lady in vietnam and her channel is called din life i'll put a link below and she doesn't speak uh it's just very it's a little bit it's got like that asmr feel with music overlaid it's very calm relaxing 
atmospheric um her, her cinematography is amazing and her editing is like on fleek but um she's um a hand stitcher i'm obsessed with her i can't stop watching her i just find i'm like sit there like this you know like mesmerized and everything she shows i want to i want to make um beautiful beautiful and if you're into that sort of minimalist um aesthetic you know that's definitely up your street but what i really really like about her channel is everything she makes is from scraps even um she she's got a beautiful tutorial and a downloadable pattern for it if you if you want to have a go of a little um hand stitch bear it's gorgeous and um, all the filling is um like waste scraps even um she keeps she's got a bowl with all like her cotton off um off cuts so it, you know she doesn't waste a thing. I think it's oops, I think it's all like, um, you know, environmentally friendly and ethically sourced things as well. So really gorgeous channel. Um, I fancy making that miniature bear. Years and years ago, uh, I'm kicking myself now. Um, when I lived in the UK, I mean, gosh, I must have been in my twenties. I was obsessed with miniature teddy bears, and I'm talking miniature this big, and I had um a beautiful miniature teddy bear book and it was one of these um you know these book clubs that you used to sign up to once a month and then you got things um like book of the month and you had so long to return it and i always got stuck with them and i never ended up returning these books and i used to get stuck with some really crummy books that were expensive and i never would have bought um anyway one of the books was this miniature teddy bear book and I was obsessed with it and I used to make these little tiny bears and they had moving legs and everything, like the old fashioned bears and uh, from like scraps, like sc I used to make a lot of um, my uh, work clothes then, you know, like um, like office wear, skirts and stuff. So all the little scraps of the hems I used to keep, I haven't kept any of them and do I know where that book is and can I find that book? I've seen two on Amazon and it's like both the front covers look familiar but it's like, oh, which one? I just, I don't know. I'm really sort of, I'm kicking myself about that because now I've got a doll's house. <laughs> what have I been buying? Miniature teddy bears. I bought one for me and one for my mum. But um, I really fancy having a go at that again. Anyway, um, Din Life, she's got this bear pattern. So I might give that a go. You know, now I'm really getting into my um, hand stitching. I just, I like um, that sort of, quiet calm sat on the sofa in the evening and I have like a reading lamp over me and really thick reading glasses because I can't see I'm like but I'm really enjoying it so yeah they're the channels I've been watching um but as I said there'll be links below um this week so today um it's actually I'm filming this on a Monday um hopefully it'll be when you're watching it it'll be Tuesday and onwards in your world um i've taken a day off work because tomorrow is a bank holiday in the netherlands it's actually it's called king's day uh, and it's because it's the king's birthday william alexander's birthday is tomorrow uh before he um became the successor to the throne his mum who's still alive she ab abdicated um so he could be king uh queen beatrix um beatrice not beatrix beatrice um it was um, Queen's Day. So though again in April, but I thought maybe hers was around the 30th and William Alexander changed his to the 27th, I thought. So um, yeah, it's a bank holiday tomorrow. So I figured, well, I don't work Friday. So I've had like a really, really like a mini break. So I've been off Friday through to Tuesday. So that's nice. Um, Lawrence is working today. William's off school. Um, I'm hoping uh you wouldn't have seen it yet because it'll be in, um next week's weekly vlog the boat our boat went in the water on saturday so i'm hoping we might get a little sail in um this week that will be nice to go out on the water again i've missed it so much and i tend to crochet more on the boat as well uh the other thing which um if you did watch last week's vlog you'll know i had a disaster with my craft room so at home um i do have the it's in england we call it the box the box room like the single bedroom it used to be the kids nursery um it's now it it's now my craft room which is now my office because i'm working from home uh but i do have 
um, I keep my yarn and a small stash of fabric there and I've got um, I've got a sewing machine and an overlocker there and I've got another sewing machine here that um, I, don't, I use occasionally I don't, I'm not that keen on it that's a Singer Brilliant and the one at home is a Husqvarna Viking Platinum 750 I thought and the overlocker is a, a Singer basic you know I think the, the cheapy one everybody's got but um, anyway, uh, because I'm working from home, uh, sometimes I forget to put the background on when I'm in meetings and I've got this pile of yarn behind me and I can see people are doing this. They're trying to look around me and I, I'm like, mortified at the state of it. So um, I've been in a mind to buy a cupboard for that. Anyway, cut to the story. A friend of mine was selling one. Um, I ended up saying i'd have it and she said we're moving please take it you can have it for nothing i'm glad you know get get it out of the house so um lawrence and josh went to get it i cleared out um that yarn corner in the office dismantled all the shelves and um, piled it all up on the bed and it was in plastic bags and laundry bags and you name it it was like everywhere you can imagine it was a mess I mean, I found a lot of yarn that I didn't even know I had. None of it, like, expensive hand-dyed. It was all, like, either cotton, because um, I was a big crochet before I got into knitting, or um, acrylic, you know, which is nothing wrong with that. I love I love budget acrylic. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, the cupboard wouldn't fit in the car. So then I had all this yarn on the bed and I'd forgotten about it and it was midnight and then I went upstairs and I was like, oh no, and then Lawrence ended up sleeping on the sofa and then anyway, two days later, he got a trailer, picked it up, wouldn't fit up the stairs. So I've ended up reassembling everything in the craft room. So yeah, that was slightly annoying. But um, anyway, as I said, I did discover some yarn that I didn't know I had. Actually, um, I'm not a big fan of, um, I love to wear black, but I'm not a big fan of knitting or crocheting in black. And um, I don't have a lot of black yarn in my stash. And because I wanted to um, crochet the, the soldier, uh, I found one ball of um, Scapia's black katona. So I was really chuffed with that. So yeah, I found a few things, little treasures. But um, anyway, I'm going to wrap up here because I think I've been waffling a while now. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, if you're new, um, it'd be nice if you subscribed. Uh, don't subscribe, though, if you're just looking for a podcast and you're going to be disappointed that vlog because, as I said at the beginning, the channel is a mixture. So um, if you want to just dip in and out when you fancy, that's fine. Uh, but if you don't want to sort of miss the the vlogs my weekly waffling and things we're getting up to and as i said you know restrictions are starting to lift so we'll be getting out a bit more um and then the podcast will be you know once or twice in a month so um yeah it'd be nice if you can hit the subscribe bell always nice to get new new um friends to our community and um anyway even if you just want to say hello Give us a wave in the comments. I read every one of them and um, I really love interacting with you all and like hearing where you're from or what you've been working on or yeah, if you want to sympathise with me about these uh, terrible Knit Pro uh, fixed. I don't know, the three millimetre, it's, yeah, that's crazy. Um, so if you want to sympathise with me on that, I'm all for a good moan now and again. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next vlog or podcast. Stay safe. Bye for now.